The Chevrolet Cheval was a mid-sized automobile produced by the Chevrolet division of General Motors in three generations for the 1964 through 1977 model years. Part of the GMA body platform, the Cheval was one of Chevrolet's most successful name plates. Body styles include coupes, sedans, convertibles and station wagons. Super Sport versions were produced through the 1973 model year, and Lagunas from 1973 through 1976. After a three-year absence, the El Camino was reintroduced as part of the new Cheval lineup. The Cheval also provided the platform for the Monte Carlo introduced in 1970. The Malibu, the top-of-the-line model through 1972, replaced the Cheval nameplate for the redesigned, downsized 1978 models. History, first generation, overview, the Cheval was intended to compete with the Ford Fairlane, and to return to the Chevrolet lineup a model similar in size and concept to the popular 1955-57 models. Enthusiasts were quick to notice that the Chevalier Euro unregistered trademark S115 inch wheelbase was the same as that of the 1955-57 Chevy. Two-door hardtop coupes, and convertibles, four-door sedans, and four-door station wagons were offered throughout the entire run. In line with other Chevrolet series, the two-door hardtops were called sport coupes. Four-door hardtops, dubbed sport sedans, were available. A two-door station wagon was available in 1964 and 1965 in the base 300 series. Various wagons were sold with exclusive nameplates, Greenbrier, Conquer, and Conquer Estate. Six-cylinder and V8 power was offered across the board. The Cheval was the basis for the Beaumont, a retrimmed model sold only in Canada by Pontiac dealers through 1969. Cheval SS the Cheval SS represented Chevrolet's entry into the muscle car battle. Early 1964 and 1965 Chevrolets had a Malibu SS badge on the rear quarter panel. Chevrolets with the mid-1965 Z16 option, priced at $1,501 in 1965, had the emblem on the front fender as well as distinct in-house style numbers, 737 for the hardtop and 767 for the convertible. The $162 Super Sport package was available on the upscale Malibu two-door hardtop and convertible models. The option added special exterior brightwork with SS emblems and the 14-inch full-disc wheel covers from the Impala SS. Inside, the vinyl bucket seat interior featured a floor console for models equipped with the optional Muncie aluminum four-speed manual or PowerGlide two-speed automatic instead of the standard three-speed manual. Malibu SS also got a four-gauge cluster in place of engine warning lights, and a dash-mounted tachometer was optional. The available 283 cubic inch four-barrel V8 engine rated at 220 horsepower was the same rating as the 1957 Chevy Power Pack 283 engine. While the 1964 Malibu SS may have recalled past glories, the new Muscle Car Future was available over at Pontiac. There. Chevalier Euro unregistered trademark S Pontiac Tempest corporate cousin had a 389 cubic inch V8 to create the 325 horsepower Pontiac GTO, and further optional 348 HP, followed quickly by the 310 horse 330 cubic inch Oldsmobile Cutlass 442. That was all it took for Chevy to think about breaking GM's 330 cubic inch ceiling for intermediate car engines. Starting in mid-1964, the Cheval could be ordered with a Division of Euro unregistered trademark S327 cubic inch V8, in either 250 or 300 HP. Both used a four-barrel carburetor and 10.51 compression, and could easily hold their own against 289 Ford Fairlane and 273 Plymouth Barracudas. But muscle fans would demand more, and get it. For 1965. Chevrolet also added the edgy 350 horsepower 327 V8 as regular production option L79. Still, for those a Euro OE sensible ear Euro buyers, the Cheval was also quite appealing, and Chevy built 294,160 the first year, including 76,860 SS models. After 1965, 
the Malibu SS badge disappeared except for those sold in Canada. A limited 201 Malibu SS 396Z16 big block equipped cars were also eventually produced starting in late 1965 to confront still mounting competition, with most being built between mid March and mid April. But, strangely, they were handicapped by lack of a factory offered positraction rear end option to handle the 396's big torque. Of those original Z16s, some 75 still exist and are accounted for. The Chevel SS 396 became a series of its own in 1966 with series style numbers 13817 and 13867. SS 396 Sport Coupes and Convertibles used the same Malibu Sport Coupe and convertible bodies with reinforced frames and revised front suspension, higher rate springs, recalibrated shocks, and thicker front stabilizer bar, but with different exterior trim. They also had simulated hood scoops, red striped tires, and bright trim moldings. The performance engines available included three. 396 CID V8 SA Euro the standard, rated at 325 HP, an optional 360 HP, and an optional 375 HP, respectively for 1966 only and 350 HP thereafter. The SS 396 series lasted from 1966 through 1968 before being relegated to an option package in 1969. The 1966 and 1967 model years were the only two years of the strut back to door sport coupe with its own style number, 17. In Canada, sporty chevels continued to wear Malibu SS badges for the 1966 and early 1967 model years. These chevels were available with the same equipment as non SS Malibu models in the US, and did not get the domed hood or the blackout front and rear treatment. Reedline tires were not available on Canadian Chevels in 1966. A 1966 Malibu SS factory photo shows wheel covers on the car from the 1965 Impala. The Canadian Malibu SS got its SS name from the sports option package under a POA 51 and was primarily a trim option. This A51 option came with bucket seats, a center console, standard full wheel covers, and the ribbed rocker panel moldings. The Malibu SS emblems were carried over from the 1965 Malibu SS series. This Canadian option could be ordered with any six-cylinder or V8 engine available at the time. Starting in January 1967, the Chevel SS 396 took over and became its own 138XX series, the same as in the US, Z16 SS 396, only 200 regular production 1965 Z16 Chevels were built at the Kansas City plant. The Z16 option included the convertible boxed frame, a narrowed rear axle and brake assemblies from the contemporary Impala, heavy-duty suspension, plus virtually all Chevel comfort and convenience options. The Z16 standard big block 396 turbojet V8 came only with the Muncie wide-ratio four-speed manual transmission. The rear panel of the Z16 had unique black and chrome trim which framed untrimmed Chevel 300 style taillights. The prototype Z16 Chevel was built at the Baltimore plant. The one prototype and the 200 production units comprised the often quoted 201 figure. One convertible was reportedly special built for Chevy general manager Simon Bunky Nudson, but is understood to have been destroyed. This Z16 CONV for Z16 equipped Chevrolets means this is one of the rarest, most coveted Chevrolets ever produced. Of the few that remain, prices run in six figures. Although some regular 1965 Chevrolet owners have attempted to fake the Z16, this is a most difficult task due to the unavailability of the unique Z16 equipment and trim, although much of the external trim pieces are now being reproduced in the aftermarket. Approximately 75 Z16s are presently accounted for. New body 1966 a Euro 1967, 1966 saw a complete restyle of the Chevel on the previous frame that included smooth contours, a broad new grille and bumper treatment, and curved side windows. Bulging rear fender lines and a flying buttress roof line were highlights of the 66 hardtops, shared with other GMA body models. 
the new body reflected the Coke bottle body shape that became the fad for American cars in the mid-1960s. A four-door hardtop-styled sports sedan joined the Malibu series. It was an attractive car and was offered through 1972, but never achieved the high production figures as the pillared sedan. Chevrolet's continued in 300, 300 Deluxe, and Malibu trim. Available engines were a 327 cubic inch V8 instead of either of the sixes, or the mid-level option, a 220 horsepower 283 cubic inch V8. Judicious attention to the options list could add a tachometer, mag-style wheel covers, and sintered metallic brakes. Four-way power seats, a tissue dispenser, and cruise control were optional. The 1967 models got some styling tweaks that resulted in a longer, more straightforward appearance. Large wraparound tail lamps went into a new rear end with standard backup lights. Otherwise, visible change was modest. What you'll see inside, claimed the sales brochure for the 1967 Chevel, will probably bring on a severe compulsion to go driving. Front disc brakes were available on all models, and a new dual master cylinder brake system incorporated a warning light. Chevrolet also added 14 inches wheels and a three speed automatic transmission to their line of transmissions. An entire host of new safety equipment became standard, including a collapsible steering column making the 1967 model safer cars. The SS 396 continued as its own series with both sport coupe and convertible body styles. The 375 horsepower 396 cubic inch V8 was dropped from the options list until late in the model year and returned with little fanfare resulting in only 612 being sold. Buyers selected from no less than seven transmissions, two manual three speeds, two manual four speeds, an overdrive three speed, and two automatics. The manual shift feature of the turbo hydromatic transmission was touted in advertising. Options included superlift air shock absorbers, Strato-E's headrests, and special instrumentation. Although Chevy's big news for 1967 was the introduction of the Camaro, Chevel offered a more traditional sort of sportiness. Second generation, overview, the 1968 Chevel got an all-new distinctly sculpted body with tapered front fenders and a rounded belt line. The car adopted a long hood short deck profile with a high rear quarter kick up. While all 1967 Chevrolet models rode a 115-inch wheelbase, the 1968 coupes and convertibles now rode a sporty 112-inch wheelbase. The sedans and wagons turned to a 116-inch span. Tread width grew an inch front and rear. Hardtop coupes featured a semi-fastback, flowing roof lin. Top trim models featured GM's new high day way wiper system. Lesser Chevels would get the change later. The Super Sport became series on its own. Chevrolet produced 60,499 SS 396 Sport Coupes, 2,286 convertibles, and 5,190 El Caminos. 1968 was the only year the El Camino body style would get its own SS 396 series designation. Black accented Super Sports Road F70X 14 red striped tires and carried a standard 325 horsepower 396 cubic inch turbojet V8 engine below the special twin domed hood. 350 and 375 horsepower 396 engines could be substituted at additional cost. The SS 396 Sport Coupe started at $2,899 or $236 more than a comparable Malibu with its 307 cubic inch V8. All vinyl bucket seats and a console were optional. Three luxury Conqueror options became available in March 1968 for the four-door sedan. The four-door sport sedan and consisted of special sound insulation, and a deep padded instrument panel with simulated wood grain accents and all vinyl color keyed interiors. These Conqueror options should not be confused with the two Conqueror station wagons. Also new for 1968 was the elimination of the term sedan for the two-door pillar body style. This was now called a coupe while the two-door hardtop remained a sport coupe. These coupe sport coupe designations would continue into 1969 as well. 
The Conqueror estate wagon was one of four distinct Chevel wagon models. A one-year Nomad, Nomad custom was offered. Regular Chevel engines started with the 140 horsepower Turbo Thrift 6 or the new 200 horsepower Turbo Fire 307 V8, but stretched to a 325 horsepower version of the 327 cubic inch V8. Manual transmission cars got GM's air injection reactor smog pump, which added complexity under the hood. New federal safety mandated equipment included side marker lights, as well as shoulder belts for outboard front seat occupants on cars built after December 1, 1967. Changes 1969 a Euro 1972. 1969 Chevrolets were billed as America's most popular mid size car. They showed only minor changes for 1969, led by revised front end styling. A single chrome bar connected quad headlights, and a slotted bumper held the parking lights. Tail light lenses were larger and more vertical, flowing into the quarter panels. Front vent windows began to fade away now that Astro ventilation was sending outside air into several Chevel models. The Chevel lineup slimmed down to Nomad, 300 Deluxe Greenbrier, Malibu Conquer, and Conquer Estate Series, and the Base 300 Series was history. No longer a series of its own. The SS396 turned into a $347.60 option package for any two-door model. That meant not just a convertible, sport coupe, or pickup, but even the pillared coupe and sport coupe in the lower rent 300 Deluxe series. Fewer SS396 option 300 Deluxe coupes and sport coupes were built than their Malibu counterparts and they are solid gold for collectors. The Super Sport option included a 325 horsepower 396 cubic inch V8 beneath a double domed hood, along with a blackout grille displaying an SS emblem and a black rear panel. More potent editions of the 396 engine also made the options list, developing 350 or 375 horsepower. Chevrolet station wagons came in three levels Conquer, Nomad, and green Briera Euro the last a badge formerly used on the Cavavan. A new dual-action tailgate operated either in the traditional manner or as a panel-type door. Wagons stretched 208 inches overall versus 197 inches for coupes. New round instrument pods replaced the former linear layout. Chevrolet options included headlight washers, power windows and locks, and a rear defroster. Chevy's mid-size production rose this year, with Malibus far more popular than their less costly mates. Fewer than 7% of Malibus had a six-cylinder engine, while more than 86,000 got an SS396 option. All 69 Chevrolets got a new locking steering column one year ahead of the federal requirement, and headrests required for all cars sold in the U.S. after January 1, 1969. In addition, in 1969 Chevrolet developed a steam-powered concept vehicle, designated the SE124 based on a Chevrolet fitted it with a 50 HP Bristler steam engine in place of its gasoline engine. The Bristler was based on the Doble steam engine. In 1970, sheet metal revisions gave the bodies a more squared-up stance and interiors were redesigned too. The 1970 Chevrolet came in Sport Coupe, Sport Sedan, Convertible four-door sedan, a couple of wagons, and Cooper copyright utility body styles. Only three of these were available with a choice of one of two SS options. RPO Z25 with the SS396 engine and RPO Z15 with a new 454 SID engine. The SS options were limited to the Malibu two-door sport coupe, Malibu convertible and El Camino pickup. The base model Chevrolet was now named Chevrolet in lieu of the former base 300 Deluxe and was only as a sport coupe or four-door sedan. Station wagons were the entry-level Nomad, the Chevrolet-level Greenbrier, the Malibu-level Conquer and an upscale Conquer estate. New options included power door locks and a stalk-mounted wiper control. Engine choices ranged from the standard 155 horsepower six-cylinder and 200 horsepower 307 cubic inch V8 to a pair of 350 V8s and a pair of 402 engines. 
Our POZ25SS equipment option included one of these 402 SID engines but was still marketed as a 396. The second 402 SID engine was available under a PO, rated at 330 HP with single exhaust, and was available in any V8 series except an SS optioned Malibu or El Camino. 1970 also saw the introduction of the 454 SID engine and was only available with the RPO Z15 SS equipment option. The base 454 SID engine was rated at 360 HP in the optional LS6 version at 450 HP. There were 4,475 LS6 Chevrolets produced, of which 137 are currently registered on the National Chevrolet LS6 registry. The SS396 Chevrolet included a 350 horsepower turbojet 396 V8, special suspension, power dome hood, black accented grille, resilient rear bumper insert, and wide oval tires on sport wheels. Though a 375 horsepower cowl induction version was available, few were sold in favor of the newly introduced 454 engine in the October-November 1969 timeframe. The LS5 454 cubic inch V8 produced 360 horsepower in standard form and a cowl induction version was also available. The LS6 produced a claimed 450 gross HP in solid lifter, high compression guise. It has been suggested that the LS6 was substantially underrated, and actually produced something on the order of 500 horsepower as delivered from the factory. Recent engine dyno tests have proven that the 1970 LS6 engine makes over 450 HP and 500 a pound per foot torque in stock configuration. Super Chevy magazine conducted a chassis dyno test of a supposed production line stock 1970 Chevrolet and recorded 282 peak HP at the wheels. This test that was not done under SAE standards. The engine was said to be correct but is not confirmed. Current one quarter mile times and mile per hour of a 1970 Chevrolet equipped with 100% factory stock LS6 engines and modern tires are turning very low 12 second times with trap speeds of 112 plus mile per hour. You can make our tough one even tougher, the brochure explained, by adding cowl induction to either the SS396 or the SS454. Step on the gas and a scoop open to shoot an extra breath of cool air into the engine air intake, like second wind to a distance runner. Neither functional hood lock pins nor hood and deck stripes were standard with either SS option, but were part of the optional ZL2 cowl induction hood option. The 454 Akui and LS5 V8 was rated at 360 HP. The 1971 Chevels got fresh front end styling that included large power beam single unit headlights a reworked grille and bumper, and integral park marker lights. New dual round tail lights were integral with the back bumper. Because SS models suffered heavy insurance surcharges, Chevrolet introduced the heavy Chevy at mid-year, which was based on the base Chevel, and was available with any V8 engine except the 454, which was exclusive to SS models. The heavy Chevy was only available with a base Chevrolet Sport Coupe and was primarily a dress-up option and even it was limited to options available on the standard Chevrolet Sport Coupe. No carpeting, no bucket seats, etc. For 1971, the SS option was reduced to one RPO code, RPO Z15, and was only available for the Chevrolet Malibu. This RPO code required any optional engine and transmission available in the Chevrolet lineup. Since the 307 V8 was the standard base V8 in 1971, it could not be ordered with the SS option. One had to order one of the two 350 V8 engines, the LS3402 or the LS5454. The minimum Chevrolet SS engine was a two-barrel 350 cubic inch V8 rated at 245 gross horsepower. Optionally available was a four-barrel core-varied version of the 350 V8 rated at 275 gross horsepower. The 402 SID big block engine continued to be optional as the SS396 but was only available in one horsepower rating, 300 gross horsepower, and was not available with cowl induction. The base LS5454 V8 produced 365 gross and 285 net horsepower 
but cowl induction was available that produced more power because of the air induction and louder exhaust system. The LS6 had been planned for 1971, but was dropped before production. As a result the LS6 was only available in the 1971 Corvette. Similarly, the high-performance 455 SID engine that was in the 1970 Buick Skylark GS GSX stage I had been planned for 1971, but was dropped before production. The parts that would have been used for the 1971 Buick engine were sold to buyers as spare parts delivered in the trunk for the buyer to use and was called the Stage 2 option. Chevrolet specifications for 1971 included both gross and net horsepower figures for all engines. The SS option could be ordered with any optional V8 and became more of a dress-up option than a performance option. GM mandated all divisions design their engines to run on lower octane regular, low lead or unleaded gasoline. To permit usage of the lower octane fuels, all engines featured low compression ratios. This move reduced horsepower ratings on the big block engines to 300 for the 402 cubic inch V8 but surprisingly, the LS5 454 option got an advertised 5 horsepower increase to 365. The LS6 454 option, which was originally announced as a regular production option on the Chevrolet SS for 1971, was dropped early in the model year and no official records indicate that any 1971 Chevels were assembled with the LS6 engine. It's interesting to note that both 350 V8 engines, as well as the dual exhaust 402 SID V8 engine, were available without the SS option. Only the LS5 454 V8 required the SS option. A single exhaust version of the 402 SID engine existed in 1970 with 330 gross HP and in 1972 with 210 net HP. In 1971 the single exhaust version of the 402 SID engine produced 206 net HP, but only appeared in the full-size Chevrolet brochure. Although not appearing in the 1971 Chevrolet and Monte Carlo brochures, no doubt it could have been available as a special order. 1972 Chevrolets wore single unit parking side marker lights on their front fenders, outside of a revised twin bar grille. All Malibus had concealed wipers. The SS equipment option requirements remained the same as those in 1971, any optional V8. The 1972 Chevrolet series had wide enough appeal to qualify as America's second best selling car. Base versions again included a four model wagon series. Upscale versions were Malibus including the convertible models. More than 24,000 Malibu sport sedans were built, with a standard 307 cubic inch V8 rated at 130 horsepower. With that V8, the Malibu Sport Coupe was the top seller by far starting at $2,923. The six-cylinder version ran $90 less. Powertrain options I included the 175 horsepower 350 cubic inch V8 and 240 horsepower 402 cubic inch, as well as a 454 that managed to put out 270 horsepower under the net rating system. Chevel sold in California could not get the 307 V8 but carried a 350 cubic inch engine instead. Through the 1970s, California cars often had different powertrains than those marketed in states with less stringent emissions regulations. 1972 is the last year popular for Chevrolet car collectors. The 1972 Chevrolet SS had a top engine rated at 270 Ni HP conforming with GM's decree that all engines were to be rated at their net engine ratings. Despite the lower rating there was no evidence that power had actually changed on production cars of that year. All other engines on the SS roster were unchanged from 1971. 1972 was the last year for the cowl induction option for the 454 SID engine and was not even mentioned in the 1972 Chevrolet brochure. Chevrolet wagons measured 10 inches shorter than full-size wagons and weighed about half a ton less, but sold much slower. Model year output totaled 49,352 Chevrolets and 290,008 Malibus a Euro plus 54,335 station wagons. The Yenko Chevrolets, retired race car driver Don Yenko developed his own line of signature Chevrolets, along with his own models of Camaros and Novas, 
which became the Yenko supercars. At the time, the largest engine being installed in Chevrolet SS's was the 396 Sid V8. Yenko decided to equip his acquired models with the Chevrolet 427 Sid V8. While being an extremely limited edition of Chevrolet's, they nonetheless proved very popular among Chevy lovers across the country. Today at auction, the Yenko supercars can bring as much as $2.2 million. Prior to 1970, GM had a restriction stating no mid-size car could have an engine with a displacement over 400 Aquilian. Don Yenko discovered a way to get around that edict. Don used the central office production order system, which normally filled special equipment fleet orders, to create a special COPO that included the L72 427 cubic inch 425 HP engine and the needed drivetrain upgrades. A few other dealers ordered the package Yenko created and sold them as their own supercars. Third generation, overview, the most extensive redesign in its 10-year history marked the 1973 Chevrolet, and with it marked the end of hardtops as we knew them. The newly named Colonnade hardtop featured a semi-fastback roof lin, frameless door glass and fixed, styled B-pillars, structurally strong enough to contribute to occupant safety of a rollover type accident. GM had anticipated federal rollover safety standards that ironically didn't materialize. Distinctive rear quarter glass on two-door coupes and new side windows with styled center pillars were featured on four-door models. Rear windows on coupes no longer opened. In addition to the new roof lin, front and rear ends looked markedly different this year as 1973 was the year of the federally mandated 5 mile per hour front bumper, adding to the car's length. Additional new body features were an acoustical double panel roof, tighter fitting glass and flush style outside door handles. Wheelbase dimensions were retained. A sporty 112 inches for coupes and 116 inches for sedans and station wagons, but bodies were 5 inches longer and an inch wider with a 1 inch wider wheel track. The station wagon, available in 6 or 9 passenger seating, featured a new counterbalanced liftgate which allowed for easier entry and loading up to 85 cubic feet. 1973 models also introduced molded full foam front and rear seat construction, a flow-through power ventilation system, an inside hood release, refined Delcatron generator and sealed side terminal battery, a larger 22-gallon fuel tank, and flush and dry rocker panels introduced first on the redesigned 1971 full-size Chevrolets. Another structural improvement was a stronger design for the side door guard beams. New options included swivel bucket seats for coupes and turbine iurethane wheels, as was the instrument gauge cluster. A power moon roof was an option 1973-75. Interior roominess of the 73 Chevrolet was improved, particularly in the rear. Headroom was up slightly and shoulder room gains were by 1.6 inches. Rear seat legroom was up 3.5 inches in sedans. Another was a 15.3 cubic foot luggage capacity, an increase of 2.5 cubic feet over 1972 models. Still another benefit of the new body designs was greatly improved visibility, up 25% in coupes and wagons, and 35% in sedans. The unusually thin windshield pillars also contributed to much better visibility. New chassis, the chassis design was as new as the bodies, with an all-new, sturdier perimeter frame, new chassis body mounts, larger 8 to 1 half inch rear axle, wider 6 inch wheel rim width, refined rear control arm bushings, increased front and rear suspension travel, new shock absorber location, and improved front suspension geometry, the left wheel was adjusted to have slightly more positive camber than the right which resulted in a more uniform and stable steering feel on high crown road surfaces while maintaining excellent freeway cruise stability. Clearances for spring travel were also improved for a smoother ride over all types of surfaces. The coil springs at each wheel were computer selected to match the individual car's weight. Front disc brakes were now standard on all 73 Chevrolet's. John Z. DeLorean, Chevrolet's dynamic general manager during the design phase of the new Chevrolet's, left just as they were being announced. He departed in late September 1972 to start a brief stint as vice president of General Motors's car and truck group. 
DeLorean left the new Chevrolet an important legacy, though. He and Alex Meyer, then Chevrolet's chief engineer, championed great handling. Like many new Chevrolet models of the era, the new Chevrolets would be exceptional drivers' cars. Five power teams were available for 1973 Chevrolet models. The 250 inline 6 and 307 2 barrel V8, both rated at 110 HP, were STD engines on Deluxe and Malibu. The 352 barrel V8 of 145 HP was the base Laguna engine. Options for any Chevrolet included a 354 barrel V8 of 175 HP and a 454 full barrel V8 rated at 245 HP. Hardened engine valve seats and hydraulic camshafts made these engines reliable for many miles, and allowed them to accept the increasingly popular unleaded regular gasoline. Three-speed manual transmission was standard. Four-speed manual and turbo hydromatic three-speed automatic were optional. Crossflow radiators and coolant reservoirs that prevented air from entering the system prevented overheating. Revised model lineup. Malibu and the newly named Deluxe Series base model featured the new 5 mile per hour bumper system with a large chrome front bumper and a chrome rear bumper. Malibu Series interiors included cloth and vinyl or all vinyl seat trim and deep twist carpeting. Deluxe Series interiors featured cloth and vinyl or knit vinyl seat trim. Floor coverings were color keyed and vinyl coated rubber. The SS was now a trim option limited to the mid level Malibu Series. Shoppers could even get an SS station wagon this year, with the option of a 454 cubic inch V8 engine, no less a Euro, but the mix of sport and utilitarian wagon virtues would last only a single season. Included was a black grille with SS emblem, lower body side and wall opening striping, bright roof trip mouldings, color key dual sport mirrors, black tail light bezels, SS fender and rear panel emblems. Special front and rear stabilizer bars, 14x7 inch rally wheels, 70 series raised white lettered tires, special instrumentation, and SS interior emblems. The SS option required an available 350 or 454 V8 with four speed or turbo hydromatic transmission. Chevrolet honored California Beach Resorts once again by naming the top Chevrolet Series Laguna with the Malibu taking the middle spot while the base series was called simply Deluxe. In addition to the standard 352 barrel V8, Laguna models featured specific front and rear styling including a body-colored urethane front end concealing the new 5 mph bumper system. On minor impact the urethane nose cone, backed up by shock-absorbing cylinders deflects and rebounds. Laguna models also featured a specific die-cast chrome grille with Boaty emblem, a body-colored rear bumper, front and rear bumper rub strips, bright roof trip moldings, bright wheel opening moldings, chrome tail light bezels, full-wheel covers, and Laguna fender name plates. Two Laguna station wagons were introduced, including a Laguna Estate. Laguna interiors were pattern cloth and vinyl or optional breathable all vinyl upholstery, distinctive door trim with matte pockets, deep twist carpeting, wood grain vinyl accents, and Laguna name plates. Consumers continued to snap up shovels, 327,631 of them in the 1973 model year, plus 59,108 station wagons. The Malibu versions of the Chevrolet continued to sell best by a wide margin, but the costlier Laguna Coupe and Sedan made a respectable showing, with 56,036 going to customers. Super Sport options went on 28,647 Chevrolets of which 2,500 held the big 454 cubic inch engine. The SS option was dropped at the end of the model year. Changes 1974 Euro 1977 Yearly design changes to the front and rear mark the aesthetic differences as in previous years. The Chevels were top sellers for GM as was the Oldsmobile Cutlass, which used the same corporate A-body platform. 1974 Chevels featured new grills, new tail lights and 5 mile per hour rear bumpers front bumper added in 73, the Laguna name had debuted on the 1973 Chevel as the top line series in all body styles but the 1974 Laguna Type S3 came only as a coupe, 
which combined lagoon and luxury with the superior road manners of the SS which it replaced. Handling was further enhanced with the addition of new GR70-15 radial ply tires. The new Laguna S3 sported the urethane front end with a revised grille and new parking lamps, augmented at the rear by the new tail lights. A federally mandated 5 mile per hour chrome rear bumper replaced the body colored steel 2.5 mile per hour version from 73. Standard equipment included a console, a vinyl roof, opera type vertical rear quarter windows which could be covered with horizontal ribs for a few dollars extra. Body side striping, Laguna S3 badging, rally wheels, four spoke steering wheel as well as firmer shock springs, a front stabilizer bar, and fat HR70X15 tires on rally wheels. Front occupants rode in swivel bucket seats, and the driver faced a six-dial instrument cluster. Production totaled 15,792 cars, with prices starting at $3,723, but with plenty of options to send the bottom line past $5,000. Engine offerings included a standard 145 horsepower 352 barrel V8, with optional power plants including a 150 horsepower 402 barrel V8, 180 horsepower 404 barrel V8, and 230 horsepower 454 full barrel V8, except in California where a 155 horsepower 354 barrel V8 was standard and the 400 and 454 engines were optional. The 454 was available with a turbo hydromatic automatic 400 or Muncie 4 speed manual transmissions. Three point seat belts with integrated shoulder belts were introduced as on all Chevrolet models. With the Laguna nameplate now bearing the sporty model in the Chevrolet line, the top line series for 1974 was the new Malibu Classic Series, offered in sedan, coupe, and station wagon models. Unlike the 1973 Laguna, the Malibu Classic used the same front end and chrome bumper as the lesser models, but the smaller vertical rear quarter opera windows and a spring loaded hood ornament were featured. Early 74 Classic coupes required the vinyl roof option. Apparently, inserts were used to cover part of the big rear quarter window. Later 74s were available with a standard painted roof that included the smaller opera window. Inside, the Malibu Classic featured luxurious interiors with notch-back bench seats upholstered in cloth or vinyl, carpeted door panels and wood grain instrument panel trim. Optional on Malibu Classic coupes were swivel bucket seats in cloth or vinyl. The base deluxe series was dropped for 1974, making the Malibu the base model. Base engines were the 250 cubic inch 6 and the 350 cubic inch V8. For 1975, although the basic body styling was unaltered, the colonnade designation was dropped. The lineup was marked by fresh front and rear styling, including a vertical grid pattern grille and new bright trim around the headlights were highlights. Rectangular tail lights sat flush with the body surface, connected by a brushed chrome panel. Malibu Classic Coupes had distinctive opera windows. Landor Coupes came with a vinyl roof, full wheel covers, white wall tires, color-keyed body striping, and dual sport mirrors. Engines ranged from the standard 250 cubic inch 6 and 350 cubic inch 2 barrel V8 to V8 options of 400 and 454 cubic inch size, the last with a 235 horsepower rating. Variable ratio power steering was now standard with V8 models, and all 1975 models rode steel belted radial tires. A new Chevrolet efficiency system introduced a high energy ignition. This electronic ignition system provided minimal maintenance and increased power. Speedometers were now calibrated in both miles per hour and kilometers per hour. Following its debut as a 1974 model, the sporty Laguna Type S3 left the lineup briefly, then reappeared in January 1975. This time, it wore a rakishly slanted, urethane covered aero style nose designed for NASCAR, louvered opera windows, and could be ordered with a vinyl half roof. The 454 engine option was available for the first half of the model year, after which the 400 engine became the top engine. Options included an Econo Minder gauge package affirming again that the age of muscle was long gone. 
1976 Chevelle's earned a billing as a size whose time has come. Malibu Classics adopted a diamond pattern grille and stacked rectangular headlights, while regular Malibus kept a single light setup and planar grille work. Three V8s were available, a new 305 cubic inch version rated at 140 horsepower, a 165 horsepower 350 cubic inch, and a 400 cubic inch engine that developed 175 horses. Options included the Econo Minder gauge package. In its third and final season, the 1976 Laguna Type S3 was little changed. It again featured quarter window louvers and a sloped, body color urethane front end. Lagunas shared their round gauge instrument panel with the Chevrolet Monte Carlo, and could be ordered with a four spoke sport steering wheel as well as swivel front bucket seats and a center console. Lesser models made do with a more conventional dashboard and a linear readout speedometer. Production of the Laguna edged up to 9,100 cars as the base price went to $4,621. The 1977 Chevrolet's got new grills. The lineup consisted of Malibu and Malibu Classic models in coupe, sedan, and station wagon body styles. Estate wagons and the Laguna Type S3 were gone. Malibu Classics, again the top model, switched to a vertical grille pattern and six section tail lights but kept their twin stacked headlights and stand up hood ornament. Malibu grilles changed little. Fewer engine selections were available though the engines that remained gained a few horses. In standard form, Chevrolet's had a 250 cubic inch six cylinder engine or a 145 horsepower, 305 cubic inch V8. The sole option beyond that was a 170 horsepower, four barrel 350 cubic inch V8. Malibu Classics had a luxurious cloth vinyl split bench front seat, color keyed steering wheel, and wood grain accented instrument panel. Malibu options included a $46 exterior decal group. $54 tinted glass, and $33 four-wheel covers. A total of 37,215 Malibu Classic Landor Coupés were produced, as opposed to 73,739 Malibu Classic Coupés and 28,793 Malibu Coupés. In four-door sedan form 2, the Malibu Classics outsold base models by a substantial margin. The 350 V8 was the top engine. A Chevrolet SE was available and provided front and rear spoilers, turbine two wheels, F60X15 tires, special graphics and decals, quarter window trim, front and rear sway bars, F41 sports suspension and a deluxe interior. Three colors were available. Fifty of these rare cars were built. When GM downsized its intermediate models for 1978, the Chevrolet name was dropped. Malibu became the nameplate for all models. Reviews, Speed and Supercar magazine said in a June 1974 street test Chevy gets it right on. Enough is plenty, that's how we feel about the 350 Laguna. Or we couldn't pass up the opportunity to tell you what a groovy all-around car it is even if it can't smoke the quarter mile in 13 seconds. And what car in 73 can. It's not overpowering but it's enough and so comfortable that the editor bought the car. The Laguna is the type of car you want to own for fast, comfortable transportation and quiet luxury. Motor Trend, 1973 Buyer's Guide said, Chevrolet is fielding an all-new intermediate Chevrolet series at a time when competitive lines from Ford and Chrysler are one or more years old. When you look at what the stylists have done with what we used to call the Pillar Coupe, you might want to rush out and buy some stock in General Motors. Motor Trend said, the Grandam and the Laguna are large small cars. Nimble, quick and responsive. The Clenny styled Laguna has a lot to recommend it. The car has a very tight feeling, a byproduct of the heavily ribbed underbody and double paneled roof. Strongly in the Laguna's favor is the integrated, sick, body colored urethane bumper front end. It's a lot better looking out front than the big bumper approach. Car and driver said, Directional stability is so strong on the highway that the Laguna seems locked on some guidance beam radiated from your destination. The Laguna's urethane nose cap allows the front end to be flat and free of gaps in this day of jutting bumpers. 
its block-cut fenders are chauvinistically masculine, and no sheet metal is wasted cloaking its tires from view. So the Laguna looks like it could bowl over most of the cars on the road. NASCAR The third-generation Chevel was an extensively used body style in NASCAR competition from 1973 to 1977. The Chevel Laguna in particular was extremely successful allowing Kale Yarborough to win 34 races and earn the first two of three consecutive Grand National Championships. Considered a limited edition model by NASCAR, the Laguna S3 was ineligible for competition following the 1977 season. Motor Trend said in 1973, while neither Chevrolet or Pontiac are back in racing, the new crop intermediates out of GM styling studios are curiously aerodynamic. They are also curiously competing on the NASCAR circuit tracks, and selling as fast as they can be hauled to the dealerships. October 21, 1973, American 500 Benny Parsons pits for repairs after an early crash. The help of several teams allow him to get back into the race and finish 28th. Parsons and his Chevrolet hold on to win the NASCAR Winston Cup Grand National Championship. Parsons took the points lead with a third-place finish at Talladega Speedway in early May and never gave up the lead. He held off a late rally by Kale Yarborough to win by only 67.15 points. August 1976, Kale Yarborough drove his number 11 Junior Johnson Holly Farms Chevrolet to the 1976 NASCAR Winston Cup Grand National Championship. Yarborough won nine races along the way to the first of three consecutive titles. He finished last in the Daytona 500, but assumed command of the points chase in August. Yarborough beat Richard Petty by 195 points. February 20, 1977, Daytona 500 Kale Yarborough Chevel pulls away from Benny Parsons Chevel in the final laps to win in his second Daytona 500. Kale Yarborough was running at the finish in all 30 NASCAR Winston Cup races as he dominated the 1977 season to wrap up his second consecutive title. Yarborough won nine races in 30 starts in his number 11 Chevrolet and finished 386 points ahead of runner-up Richard Petty. Gallery, Chevrolet Chevrolet, see also, Chevrolet Chevrolet Laguna, Chevrolet Malibu, GMA Platform, Mid-Sized Car, The United States, Chevrolet El Camino, References. External links, Chevrolet Chevrolet SS, MuscleCarClub.com, 1964 Euro 1972 Chevrolet Reference Information, ChevrolStuff.net, Chevrolet Chevrolet at the Cretendon Automotive Library.